Now then, how are you doing? I hope you're well. How do you take your watercolour to the next level? Well, that's a question I'm hoping to answer, at least in part, in this video. But first, I think it's important to acknowledge the fact that there are lots of different ways of painting in watercolour. And no single way is necessarily the right way. There's plenty of room for all styles. Well, some folks agonise over the smallest details, working with the tiniest of brushes, sporting barely a single hair, whilst others throw bucket loads of paint onto sopping wet paper with wild abandon and with the biggest brushes they can possibly get their hands on. Well, for some, the time they put into their paintings can be measured in days or weeks, possibly even months, while others slosh it on quickly and loosely and can be down at the pub in half an hour. Well, the good news is, whichever category you fall into, whichever way feels right to you, whichever style is the one you're most comfortable with is the right one. Well, if you're still new to watercolour, then you probably haven't yet discovered your own style, or you may have one, but you don't yet recognise it in yourself. That's fine. There's no rush. You can't be in a hurry with watercolour. Well, in this video, I'm going to take a relatively simple subject and paint it no less than four times for you each time taking it up to a higher level of detail from simple blocking in with plain washers right the way through to an advanced full featured top level version. Well, there's a lot to get through, so let's dive straight in. The subject I've chosen is this rather wonderful view of Etif Moor near Glen Coe in the Scottish Highlands. Basically, it's a hill with a tree in the foreground and a grassy slope that gives me plenty of space to play around with. So let's start right down at base level and begin by roughly drawing the scene out in pencil. In this first version, I'm going to be keeping things extremely simple building up my scene using a collection of plain washers, each consisting of a single consistent colour. The first colour up is a light green mixed from cadmium yellow and Prussian blue, and I'm applying it to dry paper with a size 10 brush, using my earlier pencil drawing as a guide. Nothing too taxing then, and nothing too ambitious. In fact, the only real challenges here are in keeping the paint within the lines of the drawing, and in keeping the wash looking as even and consistent as possible. For my tree, I'm mixing up a slightly different green. It's the same two colours, cadmium yellow and Prussian blue, but this time the emphasis is on the blue, making it stronger and cooler perfect for the leaves of the tree. Remember, I'm keeping things simple. The object of the exercise at this level is to become familiar with the mixing process and to block in the elements with as little fuss as we can. As such, I'm using the same number 10 round brush, which helps to stop me from fiddling. Again, it's a plain wash, so I want the result to be even and consistent and look vaguely like a tree. I'm at the halfway point. That's two elements down and just two more to go. For the mountain, I need a neutral grey, and for that, I'm mixing French ultramarine and burnt umber together. Well, if you're new to watercolour, then mixing paints may be proving troublesome. I'm sure you won't be surprised, though, when I tell you that it gets easier with practice. And if you're painting along with me, don't worry if your colours don't look exactly like mine. In fact, you may have completely different colours in your paint box altogether. If so, don't panic. Go for it, mix them up and make do with what you have. The main thing is to get your washers looking as even as possible. Don't forget to try and keep within the lines. My choice of colour for the sky is Prussian blue. Again, it doesn't matter if you don't have Prussian blue. Any old blue will do, as long as it's appropriate for a sky. Windsor blue, thallow blue, cerulean blue or intense blue are all good colours for the job. 
and once again I'm aiming for a consistent even finish which I would describe as a plain wash one of the four basic washers the building blocks of watercolour and if you're new to the medium it's normal to be impatient and want to rush things but rushing it takes away some of the pleasure learn to enjoy the doing of it after all watercolour painting is an organic process what's the hurry there is just one last thing to add to this and that's a tree trunk and some branches a dark rich mix of french ultramarine and burnt umber is perfect for the job i'm using a small number two round brush which is about as fine as i generally go if you're a bit of a fiddler then you may want to use something smaller and that it for this first version consisting of even consistent colors throughout and just enough information to explain the scene in basic terms and as a starting point it's okay and good for practicing mixing and paint application but it looks a little naive not to mention flat and two-dimensional so let's take a look at how it might be improved it's time to turn things up a notch. One relatively simple way of improving on our first version and giving it a more authentic, realistic look is to introduce graduation. What this basically means is that instead of using a single colour for each part of the scene, I'll use two. So, for instance, here I have two greens, both are mixed from cadmium yellow and Prussian blue, but one has more Prussian blue in it, making it look both darker and cooler. I'm going to start by applying the lighter green to the field and I should add that my paper is dry at this point so I need to work reasonably quickly if I'm going to add the second green to it before the first one dries. And as you can see by working the two colours into each other I can create a smooth transition from one to the other. Or more importantly, I can work my way through the scene, creating graduations as I go. Here's an important tip though. If you're going to have a go at this, it's best done in as swift an operation as you can. Apply your paint, blend it and then leave it. Don't be tempted to fiddle with it too much. Trust me, it won't end well. Graduations then add some degree of realism by simply varying a colour either from cool to warm, light to dark or in fact to a completely different colour altogether we can start to make our paintings a little more visually interesting. Well, the tree takes on a slightly more three-dimensional look and the background hill looks less flat and more realistic. And in the case of the sky where I've combined French ultramarine with Prussian blue, we start to get more sense of mood and atmosphere. Well, hopefully you'll agree with me that the result is far more satisfying and better looking than the first incarnation. But there's more we can do to this to improve it further. Graduations are one step up, but if we start thinking about adding extra details with additional layers and overlays, the result is likely to be even better. It's time to go up another level. Here's the thing though. If I just apply a bunch of new brush marks onto the dried previous wash, the shapes that I make, as you can see here, will be hard edged. The problem with that is that if I simply apply new elements in this way, the result can start to look cartoon like, which isn't a problem if that's the style you're aiming for, a style I would probably describe as illustrative. And that doesn't make it wrong. And I'm not having a go at illustrators. There are certainly occasions when hard edges are exactly what is needed. 
So, how can this be made better? The answer is to soften some of those edges off. And by that, I mean if I take a damp brush and run it up to and along the edge of the shape I've just painted, the paint will start to flow into it. Here's the thing. It's important for the softening off brush to be damp, not wet. But if it's wet, then there's a danger that the operation will happen in reverse, and instead of the paint flowing into the newly created damp area, the moisture will flow back into the wash, and then you're in big trouble. Or well, by softening edges off with a damp brush like this, I can blend them into their surroundings. The new shapes no longer look like they have been plastered willy-nilly onto the earlier wash. Crucially, those details now look more integral to the scene, like they actually belong there. Well, by employing the softening off method throughout my scene, I can start to make things look more realistic and hopefully more visually interesting. The mountain is now sporting crags and ridges. The ground undulates and the tree takes on a whole new dimension of its own. At this level, a greater realism can be achieved by just studying the source photo closely, exploring the subject a bit at a time, and with perseverance building our interpretation up into something to be proud of. Of course, these are just single overlays. The question is, how far can the concept be taken? It can be left as it is, but can it be pushed to yet another level? To which the answer is, of course it can. If I apply a light wash of a warm colour mixed from cadmium yellow and cadmium red, I can enhance the vibrancy of the grass in the field and the foliage in the tree. In watercolour, we work from light to dark, so if I increase the intensity of my earlier mix of French ultramarine and burnt umber, then I can add further details to my mountainside repeating the process of applying paint, then softening it off as before. This way we can accentuate selected areas of interest, increasing their impact in relation to their surroundings and giving the scene a more dynamic look. As far as I know, there isn't a rule book or a manual that tells us exactly how this should be executed. The process is largely an intuitive one, and where you decide to apply your brush marks partly depends upon how you personally interpret the subject, which requires an understanding of where all those crags and ridges should be, and partly upon what feels right at the time. At this level of detail, we should expect some degree of trial and error to kick in. The good news is, if something doesn't look quite right, then because it is still damp, the offending brush marks can be removed with relative ease, and no one need be any the wiser. This, then, is level three characterised by multiple overlays and a process of constantly softening things off and blending them in. The result is far more realistic and visually interesting than the previous two versions, and for beginners this is a result worth patting yourself on the back for. I want to finish by offering you a bonus level. We'll call it level four, the full Monty. Needless to say, all of the concepts and techniques that I've talked about up until now can be refined and improved upon. I've started out as I did earlier with graduated washes to each of the individual elements. With one minor exception, I dropped cadmium yellow into the sky area to establish roughly where the tree foliage was going to go, providing me with what might be described as a loose underwash, 
upon which the foliage can be added and developed later, as you see me doing now. Well, there are other minor differences in my approach. I feel I should declare, for instance, that I've used a different paper for this version. While the previous versions were painted on £140 Bockingford, this is being painted onto a sheet of £200 Saunders Waterford. Apart from being heavier and more robust, it handles the paint very slightly differently. It's a more absorbent paper, meaning the paint soaks in quicker, so I also have to work a little quicker as a result. I also have to tell you that I'm taking far more care over it, spending extra time thinking about where I'm applying my paint and how each brush stroke is likely to affect the final outcome. of course saved my darkest tones until last. Using my rich French ultramarine and burnt umber mix to paint in the tree trunk and branches, softening them off to enhance their three-dimensional shape and applying the darkest tones to the points where they disappear into the foliage just for extra impact. In watercolour, I think it would be true to say that what we don't put in is often just as important and sometimes more important than what we do put in. I haven't painted in every single leaf on the tree, for instance, but I hope that I've created a suitable impression of them. 
On the other hand, I've immersed myself in the foreground grass, creating blades of grass negatively, which essentially means not painting them directly, but painting around them, leaving them as highlights. Finally, a glaze of cadmium yellow on the tree and the field helps to enhance their warmth and vibrancy. Well, I hope you enjoyed that and that it may have helped you to put your own watercolour journey into some sort of perspective. You know, it occurs to me that on more than one occasion I made references to not hurrying. There's a difference between having a naturally fast and fluid painting style and being in a hurry. Rushing through it because of impatience will almost always lead to avoidable errors. But why do that? If you take your time with it, you can enjoy it more and find greater immersion in the whole process. Well, I'm going to be back with more watercolour basics very soon. So if you've enjoyed this video, please do hit the like button. And if you've not already done so, you might want to consider subscribing to my channel. More in-depth guidance and advice is of course available through my online tuition service and to channel members. Details of how to subscribe to those are in the description below. In the meantime, keep watching what happens on the paper and enjoy. Until the next time, take care.